Hello, and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And now we're going to start looking at our serous fluids, and we're going to start today with a pleural fluid. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about these. These are uh, the more consequential kind of category, uh, besides CSFs, I guess. But um, yeah, and it looks like we have a bloody one too, huh? Mm -hmm. so, so even though we're on 10, I think it's important just to point out we're not going to assess any red cell more. Yes. That's, There's yep. blood. We're, it's just going to make it more cellular for us, but we're not going to say anything about red cells. Yeah. 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 Calling morphology on a cytocentrifuge red cell is uh, not a good idea. <laughs> and then plus, it's just not representative of uh, what's happening in peripheral circulation. So yeah, we're doing a bit of a scan on our low power and we're looking for findings that um, might stand out to us. Uh, so I'm looking for abnormally large cells. Given that it's a serous fluid, there might be mesothelials. So I'm trying to get an idea maybe um, if there'll be a lot of mesothelials. And I'm not doing a differential, but I'm using my trained eye to kind of look at, um, you know, the cells here. And you know, looks like there's probably a lot of poly, uh, poly, some, um, and then when I go down, to, when we eventually go down to oil, it's, it's not necessarily a surprise. So <clears throat> we're also looking to make sure that the distribution makes sense, given that it's a cytocentrifuge, you typically, especially if it's cellular enough, you have this kind of like um, circular bullseye kind of, you know, pattern, um, more of the cells would be concentrated in the center. Okay. So I <clears throat> did a full scan. Now I'm just going to drop down. Sounds good. <clears throat> so the first place we dropped was to 40. But I'm going to keep going. I'm fighting with a plug over here. I have to move that eventually. Mm -hmm. And so every time we go up in magnification mm -hmm. power, we have to supply a little bit extra light. Looks good. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah, we got a nice neutrophil here. Um, see a couple of vacuoles, not uncommon. And I'm looking for important qualitative findings, right? So making sure I don't see anything that looks like bacteria, perhaps, inside their neutrophil. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, easy peasy. Because we're not looking at synovials, we're not really looking for like gout or pseudo gout crystals, but we could see hematoidin crystals if we were seeing you know, blue black granules, which not really neutrophil, more macrophage, but sometimes you can see erythrophagocytosis in a neutrophil. Absolutely. Yep. But nothing too exciting here. No bacteria, no nothing. Yep. Another neutrophil. Yeah. Poly, poly, poly. And then when I think back about the low power, they look like they might be polysier, so I'm not particularly surprised. Okay. Purple schmutz. <laughs> I just wanted to point it out because we also showed in our intro diff video that just kind of looked at body fluid diff findings we saw cryptococcus this is just schmutz it doesn't have that same starbursty appearance to it so don't think you're going to find exciting findings like cryptococcus on everything <laughs> why not Ooh, cool so we have uh what look like um so yeah, we got some more neutrophils. Uh, this fellow looks like it's starting to get a little necrotic or mm -hmm. 
hypnotic, which is normal. Um, neutrophils don't last particularly long, especially outside of circulation. Mm -hmm. Mosey on over and we'll start heading back down the other way. Ooh, look at this neutrophil. Look, you can really see. No, it's not in the field. That's the wrong one. Is it? Oh, no, it's in the field. I lied. It's. Oh, you can't see it as well. This guy right here has a beautiful filament mm. connecting. Oh, I can see. I can see where it's pinching off down here. Yeah. Uh, it's so delicate and like fragile looking. I can see a cool one over here too. We can see a little bit of a. Mm. Oh, mm. let me get that off. Yep. Right there. <clears throat> Yeah, so with the cytocentrifugation, you can kind of see these filaments a little bit better than perhaps in peripheral blood, where the nucleus might be oriented in a way that it's uh, more difficult to see. Um, also, if you're looking at some of these neutrophils and thinking, wow, hey, is that toxic granulation? Another mm -hmm. thing we don't worry about calling in body fluids. Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, here we go. So yeah. here's uh, a pretty much dead neutrophil. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a huge ginormous NRBC. No. Um, so I think it's good when students and uh, new learners are recognizing how condensed the nucleus is and maybe making the confusion, uh, you know, um, having the confusion that it might be an NRBC. What really gives it away, besides the size, is the texture of the cytoplasm. All the granulation that's in here would not be present in a uh, red cell. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very common finding to see necrotic or pycnotic cells in body fluids. Yeah, so it looks like so far it's been predominant neutrophils. Hey. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, looks like a mono Mac, right? Um, he looks limpy to me. Yeah, well, so I wanted to say limp, but it's just it's like a little. So NC ratio says limp. Yeah. The shape could be considered a kidney bean. It's just a little bit rough. Yeah, the nucleoli also makes me think lymph because monos, if they have them, they don't usually have them that large, even on a cytocentrifuge or a cytocent yeah. uh, cytospin slide. Yeah, it's true. And yeah. um, the cytoplasm just looks very clear mm. and empty. And <clears throat> monos sure. should have a little bit more texture to them for me. Yeah. He's one to give you pause. Hmm. Oh, we just went in that direction. Hmm. Ooh. So it looks like a bit of an immature granule site. So, okay. um, I think SOPs can vary here. The one we're familiar with, we would categorize them broadly as immature gran. My memory serves. <laughs> yeah, some institutions will probably actually enumerate like metas, milos, and pros. This one looks like a meta to me. Yeah. But... Yes, yeah, so I think with the cytocentrifuge, it's like uh, it's a little bit perilous because you they can. I could I could imagine something being distorted in such a way where it makes classification a little bit trickier. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, and I'm sure you're not going to see a very nice Golgi apparatus on Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, a lot of polys. Ooh. 
that looks like it may actually be a nucleated red cell. Yeah, looks <laughs> like it. <laughs> That's fascinating. That's great too because the cell we looked at before, ready? Yep. Hey. So we looked at before. See how the condensed the nucleus is, and how this this looks very similar in the nuclear nucleus because <clears throat> it's it is similar except it's a different. It's like it's, it's a similar process, but slightly different. So it's slightly different because the erythrocyte wants to spit out its nucleus and be done. Mm -hmm. The neutrophil is just overall going through the apoptotic process. The erythrocyte just is going to spit out its nucleus and then it's an adult. But it's similar in the process of breaking down the nucleus. So it looks very similar. But like Dave was saying earlier, the texture of this dying neutrophil is here where you're really seeing the granulation and like look here you can see there's no granulation you don't have that same pinky hemoglobin color that this does to its cytoplasm yep. that's neat nice limb seeing the blue kind of ring there i wonder ooh. so um although maybe not a called finding this uh looks like some toxic ran and some vacuolization um even a little bit of like dole bodies i don't see the dole at first, I was debating whether it was like washed out basal, but I think it is more toxic granulation. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely a, a lot going on here um, to suggest that, you know, and, uh, you know, so in this per patient's peripheral blood, we may see um, informalize a finding like this. Uh, and if someone has some kind of an infection in, in their lung, right, in the lung tissue, this isn't a crazy um, thing to find. I'm also wondering if there are little platelets scattered throughout here too. What? I'm wondering if there's some contamination. I thought I saw one earlier and then I was like, no, it can't be. <laughs> Let's see. Now I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. Mm. Beautiful lymph. Ooh. What? So is that our basil? I think it's a basil. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a weird looking basil. It is. So it looks like there's some like really dark uh, granules up in the corner there. And then the, I guess the giveaway is the color of the cytoplasm. Um, yeah. Bezos just have this uh, purpley pinky thing going on. But Dave, um, there's no granules on top of the nucleus. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> How dare this, Bezos? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this this all kind of runs back to the nature of basophils and the granules and um, the staining process, the solubility of the granules. Uh, so they have a very va variable kind of presentation. So we have to be a little bit dynamic. Well, and I think also the cytocentrifuge. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna knock any of the granules off of the nucleus. That's true. That's true, right? The more force there is to flatten out an object, then yeah, it's gonna be displaced in such a way uh, as to not um, be on the nucleus. It's a good point. I'm also I was just yeah. gonna say <laughs> go for it. I wonder if that's a mono up there. So I, I I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, so that's either a hypogranular kind of neutrophil or some kind of a, a monocyte. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and what makes this actually kind of a tricky call is uh, if I compare the nucleus, uh, the chromatin patterns between these two cells, this the cell on top looks less mature, right? So that could be 
sort of an evidence point for like monos. Monos tend to display a less mature chromatin pattern, but it could also be kind of a band. So we've seen immature granulocytes in this too. Um, so yeah. yeah. So a little bit I, of a coin flip here. I would go with a mono. It's hard to see on the screen, but there are those very fine granules that monos have in the cytoplasm. Yeah, on my side, it looks very smooth. And I'd like to see the ground glass kind of textured yep. characteristics of the mono. But... So if you look, you can almost, almost on the screen tell that it's kind of textured over here and it's there's nothing over here. Mm. that little area but it's really hard to see and i can mm. the only way i really see it is when i look in there mm. good the other thing too these slides are starting to get a little on the older <laughs> side right um this one's look, okay look at the what is <laughs> see, that's what I'm, i think that's the micro like a little teeny micro sphero yeah yeah but that's why we don't call morphology because we'd be calling yeah. micro spheros maybe acanthos and all these crazy things We're just going that direction. So what about this? <clears throat> Pretty. This is a nice mall now. Mm -hmm. Um, and then some schmutz. I don't know what we call that. Schmutzy. Schmutzies. Yeah, and some nice neutrophils. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Yep. So another tip for you know, students is if you see two condensed nuclei like this, it becomes infinitely more likely that it's a neutrophil and not an NRBC. Um, yep. But still the cell size is a good clue in the texture in the cytoplasm. Nice. Big grouping of neutrophils. Yep, more pycnotic neutrophils, right? And so we might kind of say that there's necrotic slash pycnotic neutrophils as a signal to the clinician that the fluid may have been accumulating for a while, right? Yes. Uh, So I think <clears throat> we should also just kind of say like typically when you see this many neutrophils you're looking for something <clears throat> you make sure to take and really like really scan the slide and make sure you're not seeing anything but at the same time you don't want to spend half an hour on a slide looking for bacteria that's not there yeah so it's kind of a fine balance where you know you did your due diligence mm -hmm. but you can't waste time when you've got five other body fluids lined up that you have to be doing their differentials as well so it's it's finding a balance of really making sure you've looked all over the slide you've done a good job really scanning doing your differential. And if there's a lot of white cells, maybe you're doing a 200 count. Maybe you do 100 over here and another 100 over here. Or maybe you're just doing a really good scan even on 40 or 100 to make sure that you're really looking for any of those more qualitative findings. But again, it's it's really finding and developing, which takes a lot of time. How do you know what that balance is? It takes time to really know what is the balance between I've spent enough time looking and I'm not seeing anything and spending way too much time looking. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult balance. It's only experience. It's only with time. And um, because timely results are are important. So, okay. yeah. And I thought this was a good field to end on because we have a bunch of neutrophils, some schmutz, some stainous precipitous over here a lymphocyte and then a pycnotic neutrophil so yeah yeah it's, it kind of encapsulates the <laughs> everything pretty well i agree yeah so this is a fun look at a plural yeah absolutely so 
And that's all we've got for this slide. So thanks for watching. Thank you for your time.